Hey everyone, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and this video is a follow-up to my last video which was about an HDR flamby and hybrid technique that I've been using lately. So if you haven't seen that video, I definitely suggest watching that first. I'll link to it up on the screen right now. And in that video, I hand blended an HDR image and used that as my ambient frame to blend with my flash frames to make the final composited image. I got a lot of comments about the hand blending aspect of that taking too long for a lot of people and a lot of people asking about how it would look if you auto merged your HDR image inside a Lightroom first and then blended it with the flash frames in Photoshop. So that's what we're going to do in this video. All right, so let's jump into Lightroom and I'll quickly take you through this process of using an auto merged HDR image as the ambient frame instead of a hand blended image as we did in the previous video. We're gonna use the same exact photo as we did in that previous video. So at the end, we can compare the final edited image with the previous final edited images from the previous video and see how they all compare with each other. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into it. All right guys, so here we are in Lightroom and as in the last video, I have my five bracketed ambient frame images here. And then I have my flash frames over here. As I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna auto merge our brackets together inside of Lightroom instead of hand blending all these together in Photoshop, which is more time consuming. So how you would do that, you could either control click on them and go to photo merge HDR, or I like to use a plugin called LR Infuse. So I would just go to file, plugin extras, and then blend exposures using LR Infuse. I go over this process in my real estate photography basics video. If you're unfamiliar with it, I'll link to that video up on the screen right now. So I would just click infuse images and then it would make me an HDR composite image, which I actually already have here in my collection. So you could tweak this image before bringing it to Photoshop. So if you wanted to, you know, up the exposure a little bit, maybe, you know, this has kind of got some bright highlights going on. Maybe bring down the highlights a bit. You know, up the shadows a tad, like just tweak it a little bit. And that's pretty good. So this is what our ambient frame is going to be that we're going to use to blend with our flash frame. So I'm going to just bring it over in front of our flash frames and I'm going to select our HDR image and all our flash frames. And I'm just going to control click, right click, and go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right guys, so now our images have loaded as layers in Photoshop. You can see on top here, we have our HDR ambient image. That's already ready, so we don't have to do any hand blending to create this image now in Photoshop as we did in the last video. So, you know, we're already off to, you know, a head start here. So I'm just going to hide that for now. And we need to just composite some of these flash frames because I needed more than one flash shot here. So I just want to composite these two together. So I'm just going to option click on the layer mask button here, which will create a hidden black layer mask. And I'm just going to get my brush tool here or hit the B button. I'm just going to get a flow of 100%. I want white as my foreground color since we're painting on a black mask here. And I'm going to make my brush size big here. And I'm just going to paint this other flash frame in and composite these two together here really quick a quick quick thing here all right so now we have our two flash frames composited together here so now i'm just going to select the two of them and hit command e and just merge them together to make one layer and now i can turn back on my ambient layer here and i want to turn this into luminosity mode and now that it's in luminosity mode again i'm going to option click on our layer mask and hide that so now i want to take my flow down to like three, four percent, something like that. And again, white as my foreground color, brush, soft brush, hardness, very low. This is on zero. You can go a little higher than that, but yeah, very soft brush. And I'm going to now get a big brush here. And I'm just gonna start painting in some of the ambient and blending that into the flash frame here. Wherever it looks flashy, like over here, you can notice it's very flashy looking. And obviously on the ceiling here, and especially when we got this, this spot here, we just really blend in some of the ambient here and take that down around the window here. It's flashy, just trying to get the balance here. All right, so I'm good with that blend. I think that's looking pretty nice and natural. So I'm just going to Again, merge these two layers together. And then underneath here, we have our two window pull layers. So we just need to, again, composite these two together. So I'm just gonna option click on the layer mask again, hide. I want 100% flow though. And I just gotta paint in 
around this window here. We want both these windows overexposed so we can use darken mode and use that to get our window view masked in very easily. So again, I'm gonna merge those two together and I'm gonna bring that layer up above and I'm going to go to darken mode. And I'm gonna option click on here, the layer mask and hide that. And with our brush again, with like 100% flow, we can just paint right over these windows and it will bring that view right in without us having to do anything. We can go around the edge of the window pretty much without any consequences. So that makes it very easy. That's done. We're just gonna, again, merge these together. So now I just wanna correct some of this color cast here and a little bit on the cabinets. So how I'm gonna do that is just really quick image adjustments, replace color. And with my uh, eyedropper, I'm just gonna click on this brownish tan color cast we have here from in between the two flash shots. And that will select that color throughout the rest of the image. You can see all on the cabinets here too, that it's getting it. So and you can you know adjust the fuzziness or whatever. And then I'm just gonna take the saturation down and try to take this color basically out of the image. Now you see if I click the preview on and off, you can see how my white cabinets and my white ceiling is looking more white now. And I'm gonna just bring my lightness up to a little bit. So again, toggle that on and off. So that's looking, looking good to me. So I'm gonna hit okay. And boom, this is a really nice looking image. And now let's save it and bring it over to Lightroom. All right, so you can see here our image is loaded up in Lightroom and then you can make any final tweaks here, like adding some clarity into this. You know, any little minor tweaks, maybe with some exposure, little things like that. Not much is really needed here. And of course, I wanna add some sharpening into this. So I'm gonna bring my sharpening up like 60 or 70%, I usually, a lot of times I'm, I'm landing at, so something like that. So there's before and after, just, you know, taking it up a little bit of a notch there. All right, so that's all there pretty much is to that process. It's obviously faster than hand blending everything. Now let's export this image and see how it stacks up against the hand blended image from the last video and the other images as well. All right guys, so I have all the images loaded up in preview here and with all the names on them so you can see which one is which. So this is the auto merged HDR with the flash Im images blended in. So this is the one we just created in this video. And then here's just an, the auto merged HDR image that I edited as well for comparison's sake. So this is an auto merge just edited in Lightroom, no Photoshop. And so you compare it to this with the flash image blended in. You can see how much more color, accurate colors there are with the floor and everything that I mentioned in the last video just Definitely more life to, to the image with the flash. It just brings out the natural colors of things and as compared to this and, you know, obviously we got overexposed windows here and, you know, it looks a little more washed out, a little less life to the colors and all that sort of thing. So that looks great, but now let's compare it. So this is the hybrid image from the last video that we hand, I hand blended the HDR, everything in Photoshop, I hand blended. So. So now we can see, is there any real advantage to hand blending the HDR image first, or is an auto merge just as good or sufficient enough? So let's see the, how these two compare. So that's our hybrid with the hand blending image first, and now here's our auto merge. So hand blended, auto merged. So I would definitely give a slight edge to the hand blend, but really like, the auto merge, at least for this image in this example, you know, you'd have to try this on a wide range of Im images and see how it, it works in different scenarios. But, you know, I think the hand blend is definitely a little bit better, but it works. Like the auto merge works fine. I think I think you can get a great, good, great image out of it by just auto merging and, and mixing in the flash shot. I think that totally is a, a valid method that has a lot of merit to it. And I think it's almost pretty much just as good as hand blending. So I don't know if there's really a strong advantage to hand blending first. I don't know, what do you guys think? Please leave a comment below with what you think on these two compared. I mean, it's slightly different edit. Of course, I'm not gonna edit exactly the same way. It's impossible. But, uh, you know, I could have cleaned up the whites a little bit more in this, but 
that's an easy thing to do. I mean, this is just, this is a little bit cleaner looking maybe. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments. Also, here's just a single, here's the single image flambient, uh, single frame flambient, no HDR blend of any kind. And that's how this compares to the auto merge HDR here with the flash and the hybrid. Again, I think, I think in general, using an HDR image as an ambient frame instead of just a single frame, I think it's, I think it's the way to go with the Flambient. I mean, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think uh, about that as well? I think that might be the way to go in general. I think you're getting more detail out of your image when you have an HDR instead of just a single frame. You can see it more in the shadow and the highlight areas. So like you're, you're retaining more more detail in the image by using an HDR as your ambient frame for blending with the flash images. All right, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support and it really helps my channel grow and reach more people. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon on the next one.